Hello folks, today on First Pass we're starting the Vessels Compared series, kicking it off with a comparison of some of the most massive vessels only a few fleets have ever fielded, world ships. Between these beacons of mobile civilization, we'll find out which could truly reignite and continue their respective society. So without further ado... So what are world ships? They're not a standard starship classification, nor are they overly common in science fiction. To that end, I've put together a working definition of a world ship. Firstly, a world ship is a massive vessel that generally outsizes any other ship short of super weapons. Secondly, it's 100% or nearly 100% self-sufficient. Thus, it must contain everything needed for a civilization to survive and restart, from complete industrial complexes to governmental facilities, to even whole civilization population centers akin to cities. Final key requirement is that the world ship has to primarily be a mobile structure, not just a self-sufficient space station or colony, but a true starship. The whole idea is that you can drop off one of these ships in an empty solar system and fully expect them to rebuild a whole new army ready to conquer the galaxy, or a thriving civilization with a booming population. With our definition now set, we can now move on to the first of our four ships. The Supremacy, specifically the one and only Mega-class Star Destroyer of the First Order, it not only functions as a mobile capital for their entire faction, but also contains nearly the entirety of their industrial and R&D capacity, keeping everything mobile and concise. It had on board everything needed for its war effort, from internal shipyards to droid foundries, as it was meant to keep the enemy forces on its toes during times of war, avoiding combat at all costs. And of course, no self-respecting Star Destroyer would be complete without its several thousand turbo lasers and wings of TIE Fighters. With the equivalent of a major industrial world and over 2 million personnel within its hull, this ship was instrumental in the reconstruction of the First Order's forces and the reestablishment of the remnants of the former Empire as a major galactic player. Unfortunately though, the First Order became overconfident and broke their number one rule and brought the supremacy into direct battle with enemy forces, which ended up splitting the vessel in half, forcing it to be scuttled. Major blow to the First Order. Next, we have the Spear of Adon. Originally constructed by the Protoss Empire ages ago as part of a trio of Ark ships from the StarCraft franchise, the Ark ships were initially built as a last line of defense to stop any possible future existential threats that the Protoss raised, but it was quickly realized that they'd be pressed into service as soon as an enemy force threatened them, no matter how large or small. So instead they were kept inactive until they were needed to rebuild the Protoss civilization. The other two vessels were destroyed when their homeworld of Ire was attacked by Zerg forces, with only Spear of Adon escaping destruction. The Ark ship itself houses war foundries for everything that Protoss would need to wage a war and rebuild its military. Thousands of stasis pods held warriors for times of need, along with enough room for the entire population of a planet on board as an ultimate lifeboat. Along with its huge production and population capacity, the ship has a laundry list of weaponry that makes it an exceptionally dangerous warship. All in all, the vessel functions very well as a lifeboat as well as a weapon of war. And we're back to Star Wars. This time in the EU continuity, because why not? So we're going with the Yuzin Vong world ships, or Koros Krona in their language. These organic vessels were the core of their Exodus fleets during their trip to the Star Wars galaxy and subsequent invasion. The world ships were primarily used for the transport of the Yuzin Vong communities, although they were also equipped with powerful if defensive weaponry. They were oftentimes used as mobile staging grounds for invasions and larger battles, well suited for long-term support of their forces. In the center of the vessel was a massive tubular worm that could dual function as a heavy weapon and mining tool, making it truly self-sufficient. As they were grown, not built, there was a large amount of variety in the world ships encountered. While the average size of the newer vessels was around 10 kilometers, some grew as massive as 120 kilometers, rivaling the Death Star in size. And our final world ship, the Hordaz class World Arc ship. From EVE Online, this utterly massive vessel is presumed to be the centerpiece of Triglavian collective forces, as very little is known about the ship. What is understood about it is that the Hordaz likely has a conduit gate integrated its lower superstructure for easy access to reinforcements. Over the top side of the vessel is a series of kilometer length entropic disintegrators, which may be moon or planet threatening in strength, though that is highly speculative. Its function is more or less a mobile forward operating base for its military forces, with little else confirmable. So which of these titans of survival is the best world ship? In my opinion, it's the Yuzin Vong world ship that gets ranked number one, with the Protoss' Spear of Adun arc ship being a close number two. With my reasoning being that the Yuzin Vong literally needed the world ships for their species to continue and complete their journey to the new galaxy. The arc ship on the other hand was instrumental in keeping their civilization alive, though the Protoss weren't wholly reliant on it, even if it had more industrial power than a Yuzin Vong world ship. 
That leaves us with the Supremacy and Hordaz, in the number 3 and 4 spots respectively. The Supremacy is very much critical to the First Order's efforts, though it wasn't totally necessary, as an uncharted planet could have been used just as easily, if more risky long term. And in last place, the largely unknown Hordaz, which seems to be more of a mobile military base than the center of civilization. And we do have a few honorable mentions that didn't quite make the cut for my ranking, though they're amazing in their own right. And that was our comparison of some of the greatest ships in science fiction. If you have ideas or suggestions for other ships or verses, please comment below. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe for more content. And remember, this was your first pass at World Ships.